And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, the reigning king of EN World, the man behind Wine, the, the game that I spent three years pronouncing the wrong way, <laughs> and <laughs> and now the now the creator of the upcoming awfully cheerful engine, you could call him the ace of action comedy RPGs. Ooh, I see what you did there. <laughs> the one and only Russ Morrissey. How you doing today, man? Hey there, how you doing? It's it's been it's been pretty good. Um, still getting used to this whole not winter thing, but there will come a time where I'll get ammo so I can throw snowballs at my neighbors again. I just have yeah. to wait. How's the how's the pandemic treated you? Um, I seem to be the only um all my colleagues ended up gaining weight during the heavy amounts of lockdown. I seem to be uh, the only one who's lost weight. Well, that's good, I guess. I mean, I end up I end up dropping like eight. I end up dropping like eighty pounds in the span of a year. 80? Wow. Wow, that's... Were you, were you trying to, or was was that... Did that just happen? No, I, no, I was I was deliberately trying to. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> otherwise, that sounded like... Da that sounded dangerous. No, Look, just, because to, I'm well a, just, <laughs> just because I'm a monk doesn't mean I'm going to be fasting that much. <laughs> so, <laughs> the last time I had you on, you it, there was definitely a hint to that because there was a bit of a... Uh, because there was a bit of a... Um, half half a bit of a tease of a of a page on on your on your uh, site. Um, at the time at the t at the time it se it seemed like um that you were going to be doing Spirits of Manhattan as a set as a setting for wine. We did uh, we did do that we did that a few years ago. So yeah. yeah, there's about four or five wine setting adventures, and mm -hmm. Spirits of Manhattan's one of them. Yeah, so. When it so when it comes to the when it comes to the awfully cheerful engine, was that was that some was that was the idea of doing that something that propped up while while you were working on wine? Uh, yeah. Well, I've made no secret of the fact that the um, Ghostbusters West End Games game from the eighties mm -hmm. is always being a, like a, a big massive influence on in my game design. So wine is a D six dice pool. Like, uh, the Ghostbusters game was mm -hmm. the first ever D6 dice pool ever to be created. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, that stuck with me for, for years. So that, that game has influenced pretty much everything I've done. Yeah. Um, so when, when, you, when you then use a, a system influenced by, by uh, the Ghostbusters game, and then you're writing a setting which is... Uh, also heavily influenced by Ghostbusters, mm -hmm. the two the two really can't help but click together, and you kind of think, "Hang on a second. Yeah. At the best part, the best part, although um, there is a, there is a small part of me, the smart ass part of me that 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 would say you could probably get you could probably get away with making a Ghostbusters RPG, just make it based on the filmation cartoon. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> but, I mean, what we want, we want to, what we we. You know, I really want it to be broader than just mm. Ghostbusters, though, which is what we've done with Awfully Cheerful. It's yeah. like a whole range of different sort of pop culture things. Yeah, I, I just, I just felt like bring, bringing that up because of that, because of that old joke, because that's the, that's the reason why the actual Ghostbusters cartoon we we all saw had to call itself the real Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't that something to do? They couldn't use because Egon's got like blonde hair, hasn't he, or something? Um, because no. they couldn't use the images or something like that. No, the as far as far as as far as the as far as um, likeness of of actual people, that's a that's a whole other que other quagmire. The re the reason for the title the re the the ter the the Ghostbusters was a li was a live action show originally back in I want to say the sixties, mm -hmm. um, and at the time at the time the. The uh, there was kind of a gentleman's agreement that 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 the term Ghostbusters as we know it was only going to be for um, film, mm -hmm. um, but that but then when the film ended up taking off, the guys behind it decided to contact Filmation, which wasn't exactly a smart idea because Filmation was nowhere near 
um, what they were by the time the 80s rolled around, and did a and did a animated Ghostbusters basically as a basically as attempt to try and cash in on the momentum, and everybody mm. knew it. <laughs> So that so that's why you end up getting the real Ghostbusters to disim- to distance itself from that from that crap with the with the gorilla in a beanie. Yeah, there you go. I've learned I've learned a thing today. Yeah, I, I feel I I now feel that today has been productive. <laughs> so it isn't. It is interesting that it that it's it's ver- that there it's very clear that this is based on um. On the fr- on frightfully cheerful more than the version of um, Ghostbusters that I um, first got introduced to in, ter- in terms of role playing game that being um, GBI uh, Ghostbusters International. Yeah, yeah, that's the sequel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. And one of the one of the things I'm a bit cu- I'm a bit curious about is you you guys managed to get you guys managed to get a forward written by by Sandy Peterson i e mm-hmm. it's an abstract kind of hell sandy peterson <laughs> mm-hmm. um was was that a case where you where you guys approached him about it or was it the other way around yeah yeah i, I approached him and um i didn't even need to talk him into it he was he was up for doing that straight away he was really supportive really nice mm-hmm. and that for have you read the forward it's amazing Oh. It's on. It's on the website. It's really long, so don't don't sit there and read it. Now. <laughs> it's, it's really long. Yeah. It's it's just it's just out there. It's just mm-hmm. you, you you read it and you're like, what the hell? But it's amazing. Although um, I do I do appreciate that even with that, there's there's a there and throughout the uh, Kickstarter page, and I'm assuming throughout the books, there's a very irreverent tone. Not. I wouldn't exactly call it. So, I wouldn't exactly call it self-aware, but de- but very much not taking itself seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And when it ca- now when it came to the when it came to the various, I'm just going to call them issues because of because of how that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. So we got issue. It's, it's right there on the cover. Issue one, issue two, issue three. We're, mm-hmm. It's like pretend they're comic books, basically. They're not comic books. They're role playing games, but yeah. We are treating them like comic books. Um, would it be fair to say that the that the comic book you have in mind when it comes when it comes to how you're treating it is okay? This isn't this isn't technically a comic book, but stuff but stuff like Weird Tales. Uh, I don't even know what that is, so no. <laughs> Weird Tales is um Weird Tales is old. Weird Tales it. Is is one of the is one of the four is one of the original forerunners when it comes to um, when it comes to when it comes to pulp storytelling. It w- it was right, one of the right. ways that you'd get yourself noticed, like in the nineteen twenties. Um, okay, okay. Got guys like Rob, guys like um how guys like Howard um Lovecraft and, and the like. That's where the, that's where they would put a lot of their stuff. Oh, right, right, right. Which is gotcha. why, okay. Which is why a lot of those early um, pulp authors have a lot of short stories. Because mm. yeah, um, yeah. I think this the art mode. So my influence of this is definitely more sort of eighties cartoons mm-hmm. than uh, than older comic books. So it's yeah. you, are you familiar with Danger Mouse, uh, a British yeah. cartoon? So that I, is a big, big influence. I am. Um, I will. I will admit that. Gr- I will admit that growing up, there were there was more than one time where I confused it for Mighty Mouse. I can't. <laughs> I um. I cannot offer an explanation why. Well, they are both mice, you know. I mean, it's it's just it's just one it's one of those things where um where at, where you see you see you see similar gim- you see certain certain gimmick animals enough times and it's and it starts to blend in your head, sure, especially yeah, yeah. especially as a kid. Yeah. But when it com- but um, so as I understand it, the first issue is ba- is basically the. Co- the core rules in of itself a no f- no fri- no frills to that just the yeah, so it was universal like 30 pages yeah mm-hmm. 30 pages is the size of a comic book mm-hmm. um uh, you know in thickness and in you know physical dimensions yeah so it's th- 30 pages it's basically got um, how to make a character the core rules and a bunch of monsters you can use That's yeah. basically issue number one just sets you up and you can take issue number one and you can just run with it mm-hmm. um now issue two is Spirits of Manhattan, which I th- which is. we've yeah. we've more or less established is, ba- is basically um, Ghostbusters in a legally distinct form. Well, you know, it's uh, it's a influenced or inspired by, shall we say? Mm-hmm. 
Um, that's w- which is why I said legally distinct. The best kind of distinct, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> um, the th- the th- I will admit when I read the title for the third one, it I'll give you your credit for managing to make me do a legit spit take. <laughs> <laughs> Montana drones and the Raiders of the Cuddy Sark. Yeah, yeah. I can't take the credit for that. So that was uh, Mark Langworthy, the author of that adventure, came up with that. And yeah, it's, it is fun. It, the funny thing about the funny thing about that particular title and what and what it's um what it's very much influenced by is around the time that I had found that I had found out about it, I had just finished doing an interview with um with two little mice. Mm. The guys behind um, Broken Compass, right, right, which yeah, is, yeah. V- which is in that is that in that same vein to the point where they have the subtitle of "If Adventure Has a Game," so you know what they're working with. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, but yeah, the that's definitely going on the on the old fashioned adventure serials, and of course, and of course, in, and of course, Indiana Jones. Um, mm-hmm. I real I, re- I realize for a lot of for a lot of people the introduction to Indiana Jones is the is the films but um were there but when it came to influences for th- for picking that particular entry um were there were there en- were there any other major pulp examples that ca- that came to mind or or was it primarily um was it primarily Mr. Jones um, I can't speak for Mark, the author, but um, I think pretty much it is Indiana Jones. But there's a, there's a, it's got quite a British spin on it as well. Yeah, it's not it's not because you know obviously we are we are Brits, we're not Americans, so everything we do is going to be slanted in that way. Um, let's see, issue four is Strange Science, which mm-hmm. um, I looked at that, and the immediate thing that came to mind was the fi- was the film Weird Science, which I'm. Pretty sure I'm not alone on that front. Yeah, uh, that Back to the Future, um, Stranger Things, obviously, mm-hmm. all, all of those kids on bikes films of the eighties. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, what you've got here is a small Midwest American town, yeah. and he gets invaded by these pod people, and they're all called Steve. And you suddenly realise that all the people around you are actually pod people called Steve. Mm-hmm. And then they have to go back in time to, to the town back in the eighteen hundreds. Mm-hmm. With the help of a mad scientist, in order to in order to save it. Yeah, and mid and a a small midwestern town. I feel like I'm being attacked. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, you know, it's all all of these eighties things were all set in small midwestern American towns, though, mm-hmm. weren't they? There was certainly a good chunk of them that that were I dumb, and it cer- it certainly didn't help that ar- around that time. Um, Minneapolis was starting to get a whole was starting to get a whole lot more traction. Mm. Um, the, of course, issue five, beam me up. Um, is you is you guys going straight? Um, all it all in when it comes to space opera, but mm. yeah, yeah. Um, so this yeah this this is this one. we're going to be doing a um, demo of this one in a, in a in a week or so actually. All right. A streamed demo, which will be fun. Yeah. Um. Although when it says to when it says to recl- when it says to recklessly go in in that regard, um, I have I do have to wonder if 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 beam me up would be the would be the closest framework that could be used if somebody wanted to run a um a sci-fi campaign that was more in vain of Red Dwarf. I think that would work perfectly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I and I I'd certainly do I certainly do that for. For many reasons, chief among them is a way to is a way to use a a puppet penguin to give my players nightmares. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's no good reason not to. <laughs> but I don't. When it comes to the when it comes to the stretch goal with um no, with number six orcs and obelets, you're mm-hmm. the sec you're the second person I know to use obelets in a title for something. Really? Um, who, 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 who got that first? Um. That would, that would be the guy behind OS plus R, mm-hmm. um, Ob- which is a sh- which is shorthand for Obelette, Sorcery, and Reavers. Right, right, okay. So with the second, okay, mm-hmm. I'll take that. Yeah, um, but when but when it comes to or when it comes to the setup for it, what would 
but with the description of a Duskwatch and the city of Heck Morveg. Um, uh, I'm heck, getting heck more veg. Yeah. yeah, more veg. I'm getting Discworld vibes just from just from the start. Oh, you know, funny that. <laughs> yeah, since <laughs> since you mentioned you mentioned it being a Pratchett S parody. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's more sort of in the style of Pratchett. It's not. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't like taken Ankh Morpork and just like changed the names. It's, so it's it's a it's a D and D parody, but in the style of Pratchett. Yeah, which I haven't I haven't seen all that many people try try and attempt over the years. You'd think it. You think there would be more people who tried. Well, Pratchett is would be a hard hard person to mimic though. He's uh, he's unique. It's like, looks... it's like it's like Python or something like that. That's yeah. hard to hard to match. He also looks better than both of us in a hat. <laughs> he looks better than anybody in a hat. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, of course, of course, if I end up running or orcs and ubelets, there's um, there's nothing stopping me from finding an excuse to to bring in um death, because I have jo I have jokingly remarked over the years that Discworld death is best death. Mm. Yeah, he's a good death. I, I love the I love the way he's uh, when he speaks. It's always in uppercase letters as well in the books. Yes. Well, is that and um, they of all of they ended the actor that they got to play him in um, Hogfather Night, mm -hmm. um, had had was known throughout my childhood as the Grey Poupon guy. <laughs> right. Who was it? I don't know who it was. <sighs> the name cur the name currently the name currently escapes me at the moment. Right, right. But let me. But um. Yeah, I could. Al I could always. I could always just grab his. I could always just grab no, the. No, no, the, no. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um. Yeah, I Ian Richardson was the was the one behind it. Why? Why did I forget that name? Um. But within now within within each within each of these first first off um like you said you're go you're going for around around thirty pages and given the comic book influence I'm I'm wondering if you if when it comes to the art there are certain um, comic book representations of mecha of mechanics or character creation or the like uh, sorry do you, how do you mean um. I've seen some, I've seen some games um, in a, instead of do, instead of doing say a sidebar summarizing character creation they represent it or represent the core mechanics in a in a say a six say a six panel comic. Ah right, no, we haven't done that, but occasionally you will see characters popping up throughout the books with speech bubbles telling you stuff. Mm -hmm. But no, we haven't done the full full page sort of uh, uh, comic panel. Yeah, while you're doing it, no. Now, when it came now, when it came to wait, the other thing that I th the other thing that I find distinctive is the um, credit card sized um, character sheet, which mm. um, I feel bad for whoever would be dumb enough to try and use it as an actual credit card. Then again, <laughs> then again, I spend my I spend my off time reading the Dar reading the Darwin Awards and reading about the in about the incredible adventures of the incomparable idiot Florida man. <laughs> um, and well, while a lot of people may la a lot of people may laugh at that, at that, I get I guarantee that ev that every country has their equivalent, and there's an entire Twitter page dedicated to strange things happening in Russia. Right, right. So, so, so um, no, so nobody can throw stones in the gla in the in that particular glass house, but. But was one of you, was the was that sort of light um, character sheet one of your one of your initial design goals that this is this is one of those things that had to stick? Yes, yeah, absolutely. That was that was going in there. Whatever happened, even before I started, even before I wrote the first word, I knew that the character sheets were going to be the size of a credit card. Mm -hmm. um, and when. When it comes to when it comes to when it comes to that particular um she that particular sheet, I'm guess I'm guessing that was part was I'm guessing that was also the reason why you were able to do a full um randomized 
do a full randomized character builder um, on your on your site. Well, yeah, it's, I guess it's a lot easier when the characters aren't that complicated. So mm -hmm. you've got four stats, and you've got one special ability, basically, and that's your that's your character. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a couple of other little bits, but that's basically it: four stats and one special ability. Yeah. Now, when it now um. And of course, and of course, the the um, of course, when it comes to the stats, each of them has what's effectively a specialization, which is a shorthand for if it counts, just add two more die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'd but when it comes to the special ability, am I mistaken that that may that that's mainly going to come from your choice of role? No, no, that's a free, totally free choice. So all your role does it just gives you that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm mistaking you. So the uh, the focuses are a free choice. Mm -hmm. The uh, the special ability, yeah, that comes from the role. So if your if your role is uh, I don't know crow, um, your special ability is that you can fly. Mm -hmm. uh, if your role is um, uh, captain, your special ability is that you have more karma than everybody else, and you can you can um, give it to other characters. Mm -hmm. So each each role has a special ability, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's just the one special ability. It's really simple. It's not, you know. Now, if you're a ninja, you can turn invisible, mm -hmm. or um, yeah. Um, now, of course, give, of course, given uh, given my given my particular um, gimmick, um, there's a part of me that's there's a part of me that's curious if if uh, if um, monk had ever been considered as a role. Monk, her, I think. Is that not in there? Oh. It's got to be something like that in there. Mm. Let me let me have a. I can't. I honestly, there's so many roles. Yeah. Because each role is literally just one sentence. Mm -hmm. It's um. It's so easy to just add roles really really quickly. Let's have a look. Uh, is it not there? Fantasy, uh, ninja, outlaw, pirate, ranger, samurai, slayer, wizard. No, I think you're right. We don't have a monk. Well, there we go. So that that will be going then into um, orcs and ubiets, where we'll have a whole bunch of fantasy roles. Mm -hmm. oh. it's not. It's not like it's not like I'm gonna throw throw up my hands at, at the lack of it. It's just I gotta work my gimmick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I totally understand. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do have fantasy. We do have alchemist, assassin, barbarian, cleric, druid, knight, ninja, outlaw, pirate, ranger, samurai, slayer, and wizard mm -hmm. in the core book. Um. So with that with that in mind, when it, um, obviously I'm not I'm not going to have you go through all, go through all of them, because that because that would because then we'd be here all day. Yeah, but yeah. I'd like you to go through a few highlights as far as the as far as roles and the special abilities that it um that they'd grant. Um. Okay. Uh, well, kangaroo, kangaroo is a fun one. Mm -hmm. The kangaroo um role says kangaroo's pack one heck of a punch. Your punch does an extra point of damage. Most people try to ignore the boxing gloves, <laughs> <laughs> which I always think is pretty funny. Yeah. Um, if you're a vampire, um, you're a creature of the night. When you make an unarmed attack, you gain one health as you suck your victim's blood, but you can't go out in the sunlight, mm -hmm. which uh, is awkward. Or, or ghost is kind of fun. So. Um, you you don't take damage unless it's from some kind of like holy source or some kind of special like sci-fi ecto gadget. Mm -hmm. Also, you can't pick things up, so there's that. Yeah. Um, I am given how, given how given how broad of a brush can be taken. I am cu I am curious about the speedster role. Mm. So yeah, so this, we've, we've got two superheroes in there, mm -hmm. and we might maybe one day do a sort of superhero themed issue when we say superheroes they're quite low powered superheroes so mm -hmm. the speeds to ability is that you go fast real fast each turn you get two actions instead of one so that's right. basically it uh and the uh, the other one is the vigilante mm -hmm. so the vigilante one is dark crusader of the night ex-cop out for revenge the criminals are all afraid of you and rightly so I mean, we're afraid of you, and we're just the writers of the game. Once per day, you can make a style roll versus a criminal smart, and if you win, they basically surrender and beg you not to hurt them. Mm -hmm. If you lose, they laugh and probably try to kill you. Yeah. Now so that's, that's, that's the only two superheroes mm -hmm. we've got in the core thing, but I, I think probably 
in the future there will be a issue focused on those sort of superhero roles. Yeah, I get, I get, I gotcha. Now, when now you mentioned um, you mentioned car, you mentioned karma a, mo- a moment mm-hmm. ago. Um, now I've in a lot in a lot of interviews that I've d- that I've done, I've talked about um extra effort mechanics and. Would it be would it be fair to say that karma qualifies as a, as Ace's extra effort um, end of things? Uh, if by extra effort you mean karma can be used to add dice to your dice pool when you yeah. make a check, yeah. yeah. So, so it does it does a number of things, karma. So you can you can use it for different things. Mm-hmm. So the the first and most important thing is it kind of works a bit like your hit points. So you, you do have some health, but that'll probably only be sort of like one, two, three, maybe four points. Mm-hmm. So, you know, a, a couple of gunshots will take you out f- just from your health. So your karma is going to absorb quite a lot of your quite a lot of damage, at which point, you know, you, you, you come up with why luckily this thing didn't kill you. Mm-hmm. So it absorbs hit points. Uh, it absorbs damage, sorry. Um, it adds um, dice to... Um, to dice pools, and you can do that after the after the event as well. You don't have to say so beforehand. Mm-hmm. Um, it can be used to instigate flashbacks in order to have done something. So you just flash back and you go, "Aha!" But luckily, before you came in, I had hidden this gun here in the drawer or something. You know, just like you know, sort of classic sort of eighties sort of "Aha!" type yeah. stuff. Um, so yeah, so karma can be used to do a, a number of little bits and pieces like that, and mm-hmm. and in some cases it can be used to power things like magic. If you've got magic or some kind of supernatural ability, karma will likely power that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the next thing that I want I want to t- I want to touch on is the is the calamity die. Um, mm. I'll get I'll I'll start I'll start with the easy part of the equation. Is the calamity die your guys's answer to the wild die of old? It's uh, well, uh, in the original Ghostbusters game, there was a ghost die. Mm-hmm. So every time you made a check, if the ghost die came up, something bad happened. So that's kind of our our version of that. So like right. that was you know that was the first ever dice ball game, and it also had the first ever. Um, I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know what to even called it. Ghost died. They invented it in that, in that game. Um, so um, so yeah, it's, it's our answer to that. It's slightly different mm-hmm. because I I always found playing that eighties game it came up too often. So if you think about it, if it's in every single role you make and it comes and if it comes up, one in six roles is going to be a calamity of some kind. And if you've got five players and the the GM's controlling sort of two or three bad guys, that's like more than one around. It's just going to be pretty constantly happening, mm-hmm. which is too much, I, I kind of found. So we've toned it down a little bit and the frequency in which it can happen. But otherwise, yeah, it's pretty much the same. And also the fun part about this one is um, it's your friends, it's the other people at the table who decide what happens to you if you roll a calamity. Yeah. Which usually means it ends up being something really absurd and hilarious. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can see, I can see that. Um, I end up referring to, I end up referring to the wild die because, well, I've played, I played way, too, way too many stuff when they, after they codified the setup that they started with, um, with the with Ghostbusters into D six as we as mm. we all know it. So yeah, it's it's like it's like trying to it's like asking me to. Um, to catch to catch a ball with my right hand, it's old habits. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Um. Now, when it com- now, when it comes to the when it comes to the um the for- the format of each um particular issue, um. I'd imagine that there that there's a, that there that with within the issues beyond the first, there's gonna there's gonna be a few asides about which um. Which ro- which roles that which roles and traits would be um be- would fit that particular that particular setting and which ones necessarily wouldn't? Yeah, so there's that. Plus, each issue will introduce a handful of new roles as well. Mm-hmm. Um, the and the way you de- the way you described the way you described some of the 
a couple a couple of the issues. It does it does sound like there's a pre a um prebuilt um sto story, not necessarily a full on adventure, but more of a story seed. Um, even w even no, with no each each issue is an adventure. Mm -hmm. Each issue is a full on adventure, so that's right. that's what the issues are. All right. And even even though even though that is the case, I'm guessing that there's a, that there's going to be a fair amount of material for t for using it for using those issues as settings. Uh, and not an awful lot, a little bit, a bit. Um, we well in each adventure we'll kind of introduce the setting in a few pages, and at the end we'll put a little thing um, with some ideas for you to continue adventuring after this adventure has ended. Mm -hmm. But each one pretty much is thirty pages self-contained adventure yeah um for, for those for those that get popular we'll probably do sequels to them so we might do a beam me up to electric boogaloo or something like that mm -hmm. and then in that way we might like expand the setting a little bit gradually yeah. by adding but we're, we're kind of like if, if we expand the setting it will be through adventures not through setting books if that makes sense yeah i can i can make sense out of that um will each of them have their own have their own pool of um of pre-gens yeah each of them does yeah yeah it's just so if you're doing like a pickup game at a convention or or something like that um and you're limited to an hour or something like that and each of them probably takes you know possibly you could squeeze them into no probably not an hour but one one session maybe a brown session at mm -hmm. a convention or something you could squeeze them into but um you can save you can save the character creation time just by using the pre-gens for each one and each each the pre-gens will kind of like suited so um, if you go on our website there's a resources page and the pre-gens for each of those four adventures is already up there now you can download them right now yeah um now when it comes now when it comes to when it comes now um, when it comes to some of the some of the issues like you it mentions spirits of manhattan having um having having rules for for as I think it says, an array of high tech, totally reliable, honest techto gizmos. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. When it when it comes to when it comes to the when it comes to the other issues, do it, do you ha are there going to be are there going to be rules set up for some for some of the gimmicks that are introduced in their particular adventures? Yeah, I mean, in terms of equipment and stuff, I think Spirits of Manhattan has the most, just mm -hmm. because. Just because of the actual um, genre itself, you need the um, anti-plasm particle throwers and the, and the ghost traps and, the, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Beam Me Up has a couple. It's got a blazer, which is a phaser, basically, and um, a couple of starships and stuff. Um, strange, you know, the ones that are set in the real world, so like Strange Science or Montana Drones, with just like normal equipment. They, they don't have equipment chapters because it's just normal, yeah, normal equipment. There's nothing special, special there. It's like you don't need stats for a hat, for example. Yeah. And when it com now, when it comes to when it comes to the um, when it com when it comes to when it comes to the the um set the setup for the setup for them um. Even though even though each of them is a is a adventure, is it, is it a case where they're each going to have a general bestiary, or is the bestiary specific to the to that particular adventure? Uh, I think Spirits has a slightly larger one. It's a bumper sized issue. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's actually um, uh, bigger than the other issues. Um, so uh, Spirits does have, I think, about twenty different creatures in it. Whereas mm -hmm. the others literally just have the ones that are needed for that adventure, yeah. So the yeah. NPCs and the monsters that you encounter in the adventure. And since I since I'd imagine that um, bestiary entries are on the same level of simplicity as oh yeah, they're tiny, they're the, tiny as yeah, the yeah, uh, yeah, characters. Yeah, yeah. It's again, it would, you could fit them on a credit card. Yeah, it. Pr I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if some if somebody shows up at a con somebody shows up DMing this at a convention um with one of, with one of those old boxes of index cards just so they can mm. make stuff up as they go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of designed to do exactly mm -hmm. that. And also, I mean, if they wanted to publish those, if they've made it up as they go, we've got a compatibility license on the website too, so they're free yep. to you know, publish publish their own their own um awfully cheerful books mm -hmm. as much as they want. 
Yeah. Now, when it comes to when it comes to that compatibility license, was that was was that one of those things that you had that you had nailed down as one as wanting to do early on, or was it something it's that developed? It's pretty much something I've all. It's pretty much something I've always done. So mm -hmm. I was around when the OGL was announced back mm -hmm. in two thousand or whatever it was, and pretty much everything I've designed or been involved with since then has pretty much been open gaming content. Mm -hmm. Like what's old is new. That's open gaming content. This has a compatibility license. Um, our upcoming level up, advanced fifth edition again. Mm -hmm. It's going to be open gaming content. So you know, it's just it's just the the way the way we do things at EM Publishing. Yeah. Um, and of course, of course, of of course, some um, make. And of course, when it comes to the add-ons, you I noticed that you had made it a lot easier with one having your own set of um, cards for um, for character sheets. Mm -hmm. And also having, also having the um, extras, which I um I will as as tempting as it would be to use those in a structured manner, I won't I won't deny that there is the temptation to put to um to put to put each of the de each of those decks on on the table, sh shuffle them, and um whenever an encounter has to happen, you someone just draws a card from it. Why not? Why not? <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? Oh, well, that would work. Fame, would those are those those are famous last words, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Although, yeah, it's like um, the uh, big bad at the end of Spirits of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Goza the Destroyer is not something that you can beat in a straight up fight. No. If you if you went and did that and plonked that in the middle of um, beam me up or something, it would eat the starship. <laughs> So, like in Spirits of Manhattan, you've got to come up with a specific way to defeat it. Mm -hmm. Now, I had saw. Now I had saw that one that one of the one of the stretch goals that you ha that you have, which um, which you're get which I'd imagine you I'd imagine you'll probably cross that threshold before before the end is go is going with a bit is going with a bit of vampires, whether they be vampires in London or vampires in in Transylvania. At the very least, they don't sparkle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, we're right on the verge of crossing that one. So the first stretch goal was Orcs and Oobdiets, which, mm -hmm. we, which we passed. And the Vampire's Bite Me, it's called. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's set in Transylvania. It's got werewolves. It's got ghosts. It's got zombies. And it's got a certain Mr. D. Yeah. <laughs> this, this guy living in a castle. wonder who he could be. Um, <laughs> what? Well, it could it could be worse? You could have had you could have had Urzabet Bathory in the castle. Well, there is that. There is that. Well, uh, maybe we will. Maybe we will. <laughs> who knows? Uh, oh, but we haven't we, these stretch goals. We haven't written them yet, so yeah. who knows what's going to be in those? But there's, of course. Now, I I I am a I'm a bit of a I'm certainly no stranger when it comes to when it comes to horror, but. When it when it comes to something like bite me, given the irreverent tone of um of a lot of of a lot of the issues within it within Ace, would you say that but would you say that bite me if you would would lean more towards Hammer Dracula or Universal Dracula? Um, you know, I, I hesitate to say it because I, I have to reiterate we haven't written it yet. Mm -hmm. But are you familiar with Count Dracula? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's going to. It's not that silly. It's not that silly, but it's, um, yeah, prob probably hammer. I would say, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I was get. I was going to put a third option and say and say that and say that you're going with Blackula, but <laughs> <laughs> or, or or one of the one of the sort of uh, modern Buffy or. Uh, Edward Cullen or whatever. What's that? Twilight or <laughs> we're, none, none we're of not that. Do, we're not doing like that. that. No. Um, if I, if I, there's although a, there's, we cannot, we will not be able to resist putting a joke in about that in there. Yeah, that given given the tone given the tone of the books, I figured that would be inevitable. But um, I don't think I don't think anybody's going to be trying to bring in going to be trying to bring in Edward Cullen into this thing. Um, I you know all sorts of different people play role playing games. I'm sure I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that would love to. I just, I just know that I just know that I can't, that I can't endorse it in my in my temple, lest unless I be subjected to a public flogging. <laughs> and 
I may be a masochist, but I'm not that much of a masochist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're probably not the target audience. I think that's fair, that's fair to say, isn't it? Well, that well that and I um for for a book review thing a long time ago, I suffer I suffered through all four of those books. Right, right. So I've not I've never read them, man. So yeah, I think it's probably fair to say I probably won't. Um, you're not you're not you're not missing out on much. You'd en- you'd end up there's a lot of nothing that goes on in those books. Hmm. Um. I will take your word for it. <laughs> yeah, I I suffer so other people don't have to. It seems to be the seems to be the motto. Um. Now, when it comes now, when one of the other one of the other things I saw that I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing a rising amount of kicks amount of Kickstarters doing, but you, but you're also um providing support when it comes to virtual tabletop. Now, when it comes to that, um. Is that is that support leaning towards a specific platform of virtual tabletop, or is it or is it a catch-all? So what we're offering is tokens, maps, and images, mm-hmm. which can be used with any virtual tabletop. All right. Although we do have a character sheet already on Roll Twenty. It's been it's been there for a, for for a bit actually. Mm-hmm. So if you're using Roll Twenty, there's already a character sheet, uh, and it's interactive. You can press the buttons, and it roll dice for you, and tell you when you have a calamity and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's that's already on Roll Twenty. But but generally, yeah. So it's tokens which you can use on any um, any platform, uh, images, high res maps, yeah, all, all the stuff that you can just move about and use how you wish. Mm-hmm. Um, main main reason I main reason I ask is um. I've had, is I've had I've had some pe- I've of course I've, of course in the interest of disclosure I will note that I've had the I've had the developer of one particular um, tabletop platform on on the show and I've um t- I've tooled around with some with some p- platforms outside of Roll Twenty mm. um and so and I understand I understand wh- I understand why Roll Twenty is used the most because well it, it because well it's going to be the most accessible for a lot of, for a lot of people, um, but it's but it's a case of co- it's a case of covering all the all the relative bases. Um, now when now when it comes to when it comes when it comes to the se- the setup that you have. Um, I'd imagine that it, I'd imagine that up until this point there had been a fair bit of playtesting when it came to Ace. If so, mm. um, what would you say were some of the takeaways that you that you had during the playtest experience? Uh, well, it's been playtested for about two years, more heavily in the last year. So it's been mm. quite a long time coming and. Um, the way we did it, as well as internal playtesting, we put it out there for some um, public playtesting as well. Mm-hmm. We got some feedback that way, so we got some got some feedback from um, groups. Probably, generally, the playtest feedback was pretty good, and um, I kind of knew it would be because the you know because the we haven't you know it's uh, it's, it's based on a system which we already know was pretty good so mechanically we knew it was sound mm-hmm. so, so what 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 we were more interested in is seeing whether people liked the themes liked the adventures themselves and liked the, the um the, you know the tone of the whole thing mm-hmm. and that all came back pretty much overwhelmingly positive everyone just said look we just had such a laugh we really enjoyed it we didn't stop laughing it's really fast it was really really simple um you know, we, we were playing it within within five minutes, and everyone picked it up straight away. Which mm-hmm. you know, it's a very very simple game. So, yeah, I would I would hope I would hope that's what would be the case. So yeah, so that was the main takeaway from the playtesting. It was mm-hmm. all very very positive. There's some minor tweaks and things that we ended up making to like the initiative system and, uh, and things like that, but nothing nothing major. So there there wasn't any instance of some of something you uh, something that. Um, ha- that had to be adjusted after 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 put after putting it out in the field because it because w- it may cause no, issues. Really. I mean, they caught they caught they caught some bits of errata and stuff where mm-hmm. you know uh, there was one thing where uh, yeah. So w- I guess the biggest the biggest change, and even this isn't a massive change, is we decided that defense would have a minimum score of eight, even if the stats that um, derived that, that that created it would give it a lower score. 
because your defense is basically three times your move score. But if your move score is one, your defense is three, and a defense of three is just, it was proving kind of pointless in game. So defense has a, a basic minimum score of eight, which is basically how hard it is to hit someone just standing still mm -hmm. is eight. So that's probably the only major mechanical change that happened, I think. I think yeah. we and I think we stopped people having scores of one in anything in the end. Mm -hmm. For for a lot a lot of the development periods, you could have a score between one and five in any, but scores of one were just kind of silly. It was just to say it didn't work. Running one d six to do stuff, you just couldn't do anything with it. Mm -hmm. Now, with with all that with all that in mind, what are you shooting for as far as a release as far as a release window for the P, for the PDF version? Because, and I do I before I before I get into that, I will um congratulate you on how on how well the thing's done because you're just sh you're just shy of tw of twenty thousand pounds, mm. uh, with twenty three days to go at the time of this recording. Yeah, we're just one week in so far, which is. Mm -hmm. Which is great. I mean, we're in, the, we're in that middle bit of the Kickstarter where it all slows down and then it picks up again at the end. But yeah, we're one week in. We're definitely going to hit the next kick um, stretch goal mm -hmm. at 20, which is um, bite me. Pr I'm pretty hopeful we'll get the 30k one as well, which I could tell you is going to be called Domes of Thunder. You can uh, make of that as you will. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I will, but I'll leave I'll leave that up I'll leave that up to everyone to, to <laughs> figure it out. But if you are sufficiently cultured, you should have already figured it out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, sorry. What was the question? Um, more on more on the rele the release window that you guys are shooting for. Not a release date, but just a general oh, I can, range. I can give you a, I can give you a release date if you like. I can I can go with that. I can give you an exact release date because we do this with every Kickstarter I do works like this. Mm -hmm. On the day the Kickstarter ends, within approximately six seconds of the Kickstarter ending, I'll be sitting there with my finger on a button, ready to press it. So it's about as fast as I can press that button, the PDF version will go out then. So on June the 18th at 10 p.m. British time, which is when the Kickstarter ends, by 10 p.m. and six seconds, Everyone will have the PDF versions. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll certainly be look I'll certainly be looking forward to to seeing how that how that turns out and yeah. um and well, they're, they're done. I've got the I mean I've got the soft covers. I've got the soft cover proofs in my hand. They're mm -hmm. done. The PDFs are all done. It's all done. It's all yeah. You know the the print run, which is what the Kickstarter funds are for. Mm -hmm. As soon as the Kickstarter funds clear, which takes two weeks. Yep, for Kickstarter to pay you your Kickstarter funds. As soon as they clear, as soon as they hit the bank account, we place the order for the print run straight away, ready to go. All so right. people will have people will have the soft covers, you know. A mm -hmm. couple of months after the Kickstarter ends, at most, depending basically depending on shipping time is is the only the only hold up there. Yeah. Now, oh, and of course, uh, of course, I'll be I'll be keeping a close eye. At out and in the interest of disclosure i added my name to the li to the list of people who who throw who who toss who tossed a coin to your ace thank you yeah that's which, which, yeah that joke which, 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 <laughs> which, which one did you go for um i ended up going um i ended up going for the f for the full set mm. that's a good deal that one because it's a good deal the full set plus you get the stretch goals then yeah what I'm, I I lean I lean towards I lean towards the hardcore end of things. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair um, enough. But with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. It's always a pleasure to ha to have you on. Well, thank you, thank you for inviting me. Thank mm -hmm. you. And anytime you see fit to return, whether it's whether it's for whether it's for more of Ace for for wine or what or whatever else happens happens to shake out or just to laugh at the dice gods being merciless because they are. <laughs> well, our next well, our next big thing will be in October, mm -hmm. first Tuesday of October, the Level Up Advanced mm -hmm. Fifth Edition Kickstarter launches. So that's going to be the next big thing. All right. Oh, and uh, and of course, um, as I always say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> what time of day is it for you? Hey, it's five. It's five o'clock somewhere. 
<laughs> the si- the sides. Be- oh, it's, the- it's only 3 p.m. here in the UK, and you're, what, six hours behind me? Um... I have I have to I have to deal with time zone juggling so <laughs> so any so any sort of any sort of hard and fast rule about what about what time is what time is available is is non-existent. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, and I'm and I'm pretty I'm pretty sure even if I moved to the UK I'd still I'd still have to deal with time zone hell. Yeah, I do all the time basically because because my other job is basically reporting on tabletop RPG news. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And most of it comes out of Seattle. Yeah. Most of the big companies are in Seattle, which is mm-hmm. on the west coast of America, which is like eight or nine hours mm-hmm. behind me. Basically, all the, and, and for some reason, they all put it out at the end of the business day, which basically means 3 a.m. my time. And that's, that's been the case for the last 20 years, so I'm really used to that. I'm, pre- I'm, pretty, sure, I'm, pretty, sure the, I'm pretty sure the co- I'm pretty sure whoever sells coffee in your neighborhood is, ma- is making money. Yeah, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, and of and of course, I would be remiss if I did not give a sincere thanks to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>